So we're back, and we are talking now with Dan Colton, and he's the owner of Colton Commercial. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Carol. So let's talk a little bit about Dan Colton and Colton Commercial. Oh, boy. Okay. The, the business, Colton Commercial, was actually started by my mother, and she started in 1981. And uh, what she did was, my father's in construction, and she, in order to help him during the ups and downs, she thought she'd get into real estate. And so here it was, uh, about 2000, I'd been a broker for 15 years with another large company in town. And I decided to take over the reins and start it up and see exactly what we can do for helping the people in Phoenix. Okay, but there's a lot of things about you that you do, and I want you to kind of talk a little bit about that, what you provide in real estate services. Well, one, besides brokerage, sales and leasing, we also provide property management. Uh, that's a focus. We like to develop an operating strategy that maximizes the return for the owners. Um, the other features, uh, customers involve uh, governments, uh, high net uh, individuals, uh, institutions, as well as property owners. Okay, and um, well, I want to let's talk a little bit about what makes you different. Okay, well, difference is, is all about the commitment. Being committed to helping people, having a passion to have people understand what they're trying to resolve. A lot of people, real estate's kind of a complicated business. And uh, some people inherit it, some people buy it only to find out that it's it's not that easy. I always tell people it takes 30 days to get into a real estate deal, it can take years to get out. So you have to know why you bought the real estate and then sometimes things don't always work out that way. And then you need a professional to help you manage the property or, or find a tenant or possibly even dispose of the property. What I like about what you say is that uh, you treat your properties as if they're your own. That's how you that's how you want to operate and that's a passion. Okay. That takes a lot of drive. You look at people, you listen to them, but at the end of the day, owning the property in your mind helps you direct the owner and gives the owner confidence that you're going to be able to perform. Okay. Now, um, I want to give out some information because, uh, you know, if, there's a lot of people out there listening to this station that are investors, okay, um, and they could use your help. And, I'm, and I do want to also focus a little bit, too, on that property management side of it because, again, like you said, people do buy property and not necessarily homes. They're buying uh, buildings. They're buying... Um, you know, you, go ahead. Shopping centers, uh, there's a lot of different types of properties. That's one of the factors that uh, we have a lot of jargon in our industry. Um, office buildings have different terms, Class A, Class B, Class C. Industrial could have flex or, or uh, manufacturing. Uh, uh, retail could be a QRS or, or strip center and, and even the self-storage, the mini storage is renamed it themselves self-storage. And so the terminology is changing and, and when people try to go to the market, they may or may not actually be saying the right words. Now his phone number, it's 480-894-3633. The website is coltoncommercial.com. Now you say that there are, uh, you know, in what we want to talk a little bit about what it is. We kind of know what it is, but the three most important words what in are real the estate. Three, what are they? What are the new three most important words? Of course, everybody thinks it's what? Uh, money. I don't know. No, location, location. Well, oh, well right. right. Yeah, well, they, uh, is that also in commercial as well? Sure. Okay. But, but there's three new words, and it's timing, timing, timing. Okay. And this has been going on since the market crashed. And the reason timing's important is because you need to understand your basis. What, what did you pay for the property and how much can you rent it for? And if you pay too much and the rents went down, then you're gonna have a problem. And so I always tell people that it's not about what you bought, it's when you bought it. 
And so trying to manage through a difficult situation like we've had, this great recession is an eye-opener. And you look at what has happened to the population. They are not interested in trying to take on this incredible risk, right, with the potential of losing their homes, of losing their businesses. So there's alternatives to that. Uh, and you might find that it could be that you want to buy a stock in a real estate investment trust. Now, I, I don't sell this, but this might be something that would be of interest to you. Uh, you might want to buy a, a smaller property. You can buy a commercial property for $100,000. In fact, commercial buildings today are selling at a huge discount. Most of the properties that are being sold today, regardless of the age, are being sold below replacement. Okay. Unlike residential homes, which have been rising, the commercial industrial properties, a lot of them are selling at property at prices that are from the 80s and 90s. We're talking 20, 25 years rolled back. Okay, the rents have rolled back 10, 20, 30 years. I'm renting the same buildings today that I was renting in the 80s for the same price. So when somebody's looking at an investment and the risk, because we're all worried about risk right now, we don't know what's going on with the government, we don't know what's going on with interest rates, where is, where is this opportunity? Where are people looking? And one of them is commercial real estate. Now, do you do free consultations with people? I always do free consultations. I have to. I have to understand what their objective is. People can call me. My information's free. That's how it starts. The end result, what people don't realize, you have to look at it like an iceberg, okay? You have most of the icebergs under the, under the water. You don't see it. That's all the preparation. That's the 30 years. That's the knowledge base. That's the, the 7,000 deals I didn't do. Okay, the ones that I heard about and people lost their opportunities. Then you get above the ocean. Those are the deals. Those are, and then you get to the top, and that's the transaction. Okay, the transaction's the last moment. That's that's the end. That's the pinnacle. It's all the preparation. When I talk to people about marketing, how long does it take to market a property? Honestly, it takes as long as a year. I've worked on properties as long as six and seven years. For one transaction. And people go, how do you do that? Well, first you have to be a patient person. And you have to have some horsepower, right? And the market's changing every day. Uh, you know, you have to be a lifelong learner. You have to go out and you have to find out where are these trends? Where are people headed? And then you have to go back and decide how you're going to market the property. Technology is changing so rapidly. Um, our residential friends are actually the leaders in in marketing, okay, and they later on come to commercial, but all the things that are happening, the videos, the internet, the webinars, all those are, are coming to commercial, okay. And so each day we learn something new. The world is changing so rapidly, you just can't keep up with it. You know, I was going to ask you how long a trend, what's the turnaround time? And it's very, very obviously different than when you see a home, you love the home, you buy the home, you purchase the home. Or you want to sell your home, you put it on the market, and boom, you sell the you, your home. You're not talking about that. This is quite different. But also, what also makes you different, too, is that you can help people through step-by-step, -step, not only maybe, you know, obviously in marketing it, getting it, the property they want, selling the property, however, but also maintaining the property which is huge because you can buy something but how do you keep it with you know filled exactly and you if you stop spending money on your property your tenants leave they know when you don't have any money okay they know when the asphalt's not looking too good or the roof's leaking okay or the best tenant just left and so what you have to do is you have to plan and prepare and have an actual plan that's why we do property management he does free consultations. We're going to go to a break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit further about how you can help people with this. <clears throat> our number here is 602. I'm going to give you our, his number. It is 480-894-3633. It's coltoncommercial.com. 
So we're talking with Dan Colton, and he is the owner of Colton Commercial. And uh, I mean, riveting. We were talking at the break how a uh, uh, fascinating, you know, your business is. And one thing you said, and I'm going to get to your next question in a second, is is that. And I'm not. You're not the first one to say this, but you can really feel it from you. Is that I don't have a job. Okay, go ahead. Well, it's it's. I, I, I love it. I love every moment of real estate, and, and the the way you love it is you want to live it. And helping people is number one. If you help people first, provide service, the money will follow. Okay, and I've always lived by that. If you, if people know you're desperate for a commission. They'll, they'll run for me, okay? And sure, I need to make money just like everybody else, but I put, I do what I'm supposed to do. I keep the customer in front of me, and I work towards that goal, and they stay with me. I have customers 20, 30 years. I do dozens of transactions for them. I work with people from Canada, okay, from other countries. I've never met these people. I work with them through the internet, and, but, I, they understand because one, I answer my phone. A lot of people don't answer their phone. You call me, I will answer. I will talk to you. Sometimes I talk longer than I should. But the fact is, is each person has a, a limited amount of skill set. Okay, I have a limited amount of skill set, just like everybody else. But I will go out and get that information for you. And that's the key. If you have a bad roof, what type of roof do you have? Is it wood? Is it steel? How old is it? You know, what kind of building do you have? What's your experience in commercial real estate? And, and once I understand that, then I can try to help. If somebody says, I don't have any money, I need to sell the property, I might give them some uh, suggestions, but most people that are sellers don't invest money in their real estate. Well, you <clears throat> do free consultations with everyone, but you have a relationship with your customers because again, this isn't an overnight thing. It's that something that obviously you're going to be with them for a very long time, uh, not only in the actual transaction, mm -hmm. but then going further. Going further, leasing their buildings. Um, you know, here, I, I'm going to sell you a multi-tenant building and, or an office building or, or any type of uh, rental property. We don't do residential rentals, but uh, commercial. Uh, and, and, and then that person has a good tenant, or the, or the tenant grows, and you know a good business will keep growing. That's one of the disadvantages of having a small unit. Is if you don't have another unit right next to him, guess what? Your tenant will leave, and then you've got to find somebody else. His phone number: it's four eight zero eight nine four three six three three. It's ColtonCommercial.com. So, what are the areas in Metro Phoenix that are the best to investigate for in investments? Well, it goes back to your interest and, and where you live. You know, the basic rule, don't go too far out of your sphere of influence. And if you if you live in an area, you might want to investigate the properties that go, uh, that are close by, okay? Uh, from where you work to where you live, not a bad theory. Start there, start looking at it. Where is the best place, what do you like? Big box distribution, let's go to the Southwest Valley. Uh, Call centers, how about Tempe? Uh, corporate headquarters, let's go to Scottsdale Airport. Okay, Camelback Corridor, probably not going to happen. The big guys are up there. But maybe Indian School's a good street. Okay, one notch off. Scottsdale Road, still a hot street, but maybe move over a couple of blocks. That's how you work it. The other problem that people have is, I want to be from this street to this street to this street to this street. And I'm like, okay, well. If you, if you give me those streets, you probably already know that whole neighborhood, so I'm going to go a mile out. I'm going to find some areas that may be or close, but um, you might not have looked at. So trying to find the area. Uh, Gilbert's very strong right now. Deerfield is very strong. Okay. The airport, around Sky Harbor Airport, where there's 35 million square feet of industrial, uh, supply is high and demand's a little bit lower because of the age. You have to have capital to go in and, and update these buildings. So, so it really depends. You, you, you know, and, and that's one of the challenges with people is, I want to buy commercial real estate or I want to get in, involved with commercial real estate. Okay, well, what do you know? Well, you know, I hear that's where the big money is. Well, it is, but rule number one in real estate, 
real estate is the slowest way to gain wealth. Okay, people think that, oh, I'm going to go out and make a lot of money real fast. Eh, bad things tend to happen to that theory. You can do it, but at some point you might give it back five or ten years later. So you have to choose real estate as a conservative investment that provides sheltered income and is a hedge against inflation. That's one of the big benefits of, of real estate is it will always hedge against inflation. Has been inflation? Not that good. A couple of points. Is it going to happen to go up again? Uh, yeah, someday. We don't know exactly when. We know the costs of real estate are rising. Every day they rise. And some days they fall a little bit. But the uh, in the old days, old days, in the 80s, we used to say about 11% of the cost to build would be what's called the soft cost. That's architectural and commissions and interest points and things. Today, you're probably looking at 20, 22% administrative costs. The cost to build have risen. Fees, all the costs that are not recoverable. The sticks and bricks, that's that, anybody can figure that out. The variables are land and interest rates. Well, let me give out your information. <clears throat> it is 480-894-3633. It's coltoncommercial.com. So, you know, in some ways, what's really what you want to do is educate them. It's right. not just about getting that deal. It's really about, you know, educating them from start to a marriage between each other to grow their portfolio, right? right. Yeah, mm -hmm. that you know the journey uh, it never ends in, in real estate. Okay, until you sell it. Now, I always compare real estate to uh, planting a tree. Okay, you can plant a tree, and depending on the type of tree, uh, you might need to cut the tree down to live off of it, like an oak tree. Okay, it doesn't produce any fruit. And that would be comparable to maybe a piece of land, okay, because the land doesn't produce any income. Whereas a, a rental property might be a little bit like an orange tree, you know, gives fruit and you can live and enjoy. And, but you know what? You might need more than fruit. You might need something else. <laughs> you get tired of fruit. What, so what are your predictions on the interest rates? Well, no one knows. That I can guarantee you. But I did do a little research. And I came up with a couple interesting facts. Um, first off, you have to understand there's different perspectives of interest rate. Okay, when we talk about commercial real estate, everybody throws out the word cap rate. What's a cap rate? Well, the cap rate is an interest rate that you use to measure the purchase of your real estate. And so, if you buy something with a 10 cap, that means you get 10% income off of the cost or the investment. Um, so when we're, we're talking about today's interest rates, low interest rate environment, you're, uh, right now the prime, which is, you, you have three types of interest rates. You have the prime rate, you have um, the investor rate, which might be like a LIBOR, which is a fairly sophisticated uh, borrower, and you might have what the, most of the consumers look at as a treasury bill, 10-year T-bill. Uh, lenders use that, okay? And so here a prime rate the last time the prime rate was at three and a quarter was 63 years ago and it was there for six months now it's been here for seven and a half years so what does that mean we don't know because it's never happened the history of interest rates going back i look back at the civil war what do you think the cost of an interest rate was it's a six percent what do you think the interest rates are in the German boom right now? Seven years out, it's a negative interest rate. What does this mean? These are weird times. So when sometimes you might want to store your capital in a piece of real estate and just say, you know what, I don't know what to do with it, but I don't want to buy an interest bond. Uh, maybe I'll just buy this real estate I know I'm going to get a return on it, and under the worst case scenarios, it's worth something. Okay. I'm going to say this about interest rates. My finance teacher said interest rates only go in one direction. So what direction are they? Right now they're down. 
Okay. So until they change, I'm going to keep with that philosophy. And when I went back and looked at these interest rates, I said to myself, boy, uh, they could go lower. And it's hard to fathom that. But when I hear the 10-year the, the T-bill, real quick, is bid in, okay? The prime is manipulated by the federal government. So always keep that in mind. You know what? It's amazing. And again, a lot of people here are looking at you because they're so interested in what you have to say. And out there, if you are interested or already in uh, or, you know, maybe you need somebody to help you with getting that your property uh, managed and taken care of, he can help you. The number to call him is, is area code 480-894-3633. It's coltoncommercial.com. You, you, you were very good, and I'm, and I hope you really like. I want it. more. You know, it was very informational. You know, which I liked about it. It was totally not selling anybody on anything, right. and I like that too.